Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's wonderful afternoon with Dr. Murli. Thank you, Girija, Varsha, Monica, Teja. Lawrence didn't come. 
buzz him inspire him and see to that he joins see there are so many question banks so many videos available but still why we are not able to crack neat pg we need inspiration we need a teacher who sits with us studies with us every day and show that he is studying and you also study that is the power of a face to face class and a live broadcast so sunita and many more who are all online who joined thank you so every sunday we have a grand test morning 10 am to 1 pm if you are from hyderabad please come to the center we will give you the question paper print out and you answer it. and also you can answer it on the score app please download score neat pg app so there you can answer unlike many other uh, mock test series our mock tests are uh, chatbot based the moment you answer the question it will tell you a right or wrong and it if you want it will show you explanation then you can go to the next question and after every subject five questions anatomy once anatomy is over it will give you the um score in anatomy then once more physiology biochemistry like that there and then you start getting scores your positive score your negative score etc etc right so once you finish the test we have a discussion 1 pm to 3 pm so every week every test you need to check what is your total positive score total negative score and total score so even if it is uh, only 50% questions correct no problem slowly you should improve in every test every sunday to sunday you should keep improving and uh, strengthening so that is the whole idea of this 50 full scale grantus doctor from july 31st to december 31st please inform your friends also to join in the month of december january suppose if examiner delays it to february march doesn't matter every alternate day we keep having a mock test from the december onwards until exam but by november 22 we finish all 19 subjects 54000 uh, high yield facts from 17500 paragraphs in 1500 pages notes we will try to finish keep on revising the notes all these if you want to get better scores in uh, mock test only secret is how much you are fastly revising the notes which is being given to you with that preamble with full floor joining today take a snap and then put in the groups eh in all groups rish good good we have become a lot of exhibition is nowadays right so there is no other way even teacher has to get into advertisement business right no one can advertise you unless you tell that you are the best and the only best available in the market right so let's make the great beginning and uh, monica how many questions you answered at least 100 middle middle how about you girija 120 in middle middle okay so uh, next time onwards we will launch the test exactly at 10 am on sunday on the uh, app so you keep uh, answering on the score app parallelly you have the booklet also then i'll come and discuss we'll make it a religious habit people go to church on sunday you will come to john pope paul dr murli bharadwaj sunday need pg church right so dr now the church is also online you know that 
Yeah, yeah. I'm married to a Christian. My both children follow the Christian religion, so I'm a Brahmin. So uh, they all listen in the home. Uh, otherwise, uh, there is a church in road number 12, Banjana Hills, no? Jagan, near Jagan home, Lotus Pond. There they, Pearl Church, they go to Pearl Church. So I come here to deliver a church to all of you people. So, doctor, let's make the great beginning. Can you please punch Sunita, Shekhar, and everyone, whether the voice is loud and clear? Now, on all these Sunday grant test discussions, I'll go very fast. The idea is to finish 200 questions discussion. So wherever discussion is needed, I'll try to add. So, please apologize me. Unlike our regular uh, classes, no? We study for three hours and actually we... Discuss subject for 30 minutes and two and a half hours is sutti. Right? It won't be like that here. Hmm? Now, called a timpani, what is acceptable average? Sensory supply of the face is by? By the trigeminal, not the facial nerve. Called a timpani is basically under two thirds of the tongue taste and it typically uh, passes through facial nerve. A quick quiz question. Which pitrosal nerve conveys the secretomotor fibers to the uh, lacrimal gland and all? So there is one greater pitrosal nerve, lesser pitrosal nerve. Do you know, have you heard of it? Very important. Greater pitrosal now, terago palatine ganglion and uh, secretomotor fibers to your lacrimal gland and greater pitrosal nerve is associated with uh, facial nerve. We'll anyway discuss this in a full detail when we discuss neurology. Now, all this means Satyendra, Muhammad, Dimamuddin and many more uh, join the live session. All these veins drain into internal jugular vein except retromandibular vein. So one of the favorite questions of the examiner is what are the things that drain into internal jugular vein? So internal jugular vein has an anterior division and posterior division. Into the anterior division joins the facial vein to form common facial vein which drains into internal jugular vein. And the posterior division, you are having all this. Occipital vein, pharyngeal vein, lingual vein, inferior pitrosal vein, facial vein, and superior and middle thyroid veins. They all drain uh, into the internal uh, jugular, uh, I mean, into the jugular vein divisions is what you need to remember. Then once more, orbit doctor, Medial wall, lateral wall, superior wall, anterior wall. Uh, it's a retromandibular vein. Yeah, sorry. All the veins drain into internal jugular. Right? So, retromandibular is the one which drains into external jugular. And these are all the branches that drain into the internal jugular. That's the idea. Okay? Now, medial wall of the orbit. So you should remember, of all the walls, the thinnest is the medial wall of the orbit. Could you get to Varsha? This is lateral wall, medial wall, floor, roof of the orbit. Of all, it is medial wall which is the thinnest, one of the favorite MCQ. Medial wall is formed by maxillars, frontal process, lacrimal bone, orbital bone of the ethmoid, body of the sphenoid, and what? Lateral wall is the strongest wall, and it is formed by two bones, zygomatic and orbital surface of greater wing of sphenoid. Similarly, roof is formed by the orbital plate of frontal bone and lesser wing of sphenoid. And the floor of the orbit is formed by the maxilla, zygomatic bone, and palatine bones, orbital surface. So, so much to remember. 
differentiation of the gonads boy or girl will be known by 9 weeks could you answer it correctly this we have done it in our uh, embryology so this is how what we study monday to saturday will come in sunday exam but since uh, out of 54000 facts uh, already we finished uh, almost uh, uh, 10 to 12000 facts we finished you are not able to believe you have the notes now almost 4 500 pages notes is being given huh eh? so almost 15000 points high yield facts we finished in uh, the printed notes i gave to you right keep on revising can i be able to finish uh, 100 pages a day 50 pages a day like that you need to keep a benchmark right rubde mixi me dalo grinding karo subject ko murli bharatwaj will uh, keep giving sending you hot hot notes that is the whole idea now which muscle is attached to perineal body it is attached to bulbospongiosus so bulbospongiosus covers the bulb of penis and perineal body may nine muscles will be there you need to remember perineal body superficial deep transverse perineal muscles pair of each of them two sphincter sexual anal sphincter and sphincter urethra and levator anal muscle levator anal muscle has three components pubococcygeus iliococcygeus not ischiococcygeus and bulbospongiosus this is uh, the perineal body composition one of the another favorite question one more mock test we will give once more perineal body because perineal body is sitting in the examiner's qb question bank huh eh? so basically we used a artificial intelligence machine learning algorithm retrospectively dig into the question bank so what are the areas that are there in the examiner's question bank so what which question banks did our machine learning algorithm analyzed past 30 years of aims pgi jipmer dnb all india need pg six question banks it has analyzed and then created a algorithm of most probable questions topic areas 10000 areas are there those things we will ask as uh, mock tests understand but to answer them thoroughly your database should be good 54000 points database if you are good this 10000 areas which are the hot areas of exam that you will hit simple calculation entrance preparation no confusion right uh i think by now you understood are the things more clear than what they were about a month ago varsha huh a month ago life was very uncertain we don't know what to read how much to read how to read how to analyze but in one month there is leaps of improvement in our uh, this thing that is called strategy that is where dr murli bharadwaj comes ot for murli so which is the best predictor of vagal tone doctor vagal tone is basal heart rate if you are a yogic personality you will have a 60 only heart rate which is still normal withdrawal reflex withdrawal reflex is also called nociceptive reflex if somebody pinches we will immediately withdraw so that pinch is what pain so what carries the pain doctor it is not 1a it is which one type three type four fibers are the ones which carry the pain so that is odd man out so withdrawal reflex has a long latency polysynaptic it has after discharge they are all the true statements once more i leave the literature for all of you about the classification of nerve fibers right uh, 
<clears throat> Very good. 16 online students. Keep punching your answers, doctor. Satyendra and everybody. Keep punching whatever comes to your mind as an answer. That will be great. So A alpha fibers, A beta fibers, A delta fibers, that's how we divide it and what do they carry and et cetera, et cetera. I leave the literature for you. Cerebrospinal fluid. It is produced by choroid plexus. And how much? 30 ml is the volume. And uh, which is there in the cerebral ventricles. And in the serpignoid space, it is 125 ml. And normally, what is the CS of pressure? 70 to 180 millimeters water. About the ECG, this is an easy question. I think this you correctly answered. Girija? B, B can you see it confused? Huh? D, B. D ka? Ventricular depolarization, repolarization happen, correct? No. What is QT interval? It includes QRS and T wave. QRS represents? T wave represents? So ventricular depolarization plus repolarization happen during the QT. What is the normal QTC interval? Uh, corrected QT interval means? QT by square root of RR interval. That is less than 420 milliseconds. When do you call prolonged QT Girija? If it is more than 600 milliseconds, it is called prolonged QT. And prolonged QT lead to which arrhythmia? Torsadis depointus, which is also called polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. You are there now, we discuss cardiology. Hmm? It went long ago. Once more, SVT versus VT also we discussed. Where do you get fusion beat? Fusion beat? VT? Good. And which is narrow complex, which is wide complex QRS tachycardia? VT is wide QRS tachycardia. SVT is narrow QRS tachycardia. Don't worry, uh, Varsha. What you need to do? No, you need to put another three, four hours extra effort every day to finish the videos. Videos with PowerPoint. Only thing is, in videos and PowerPoint, you, you will not be kept so electrified by Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. Already, Murli Bharadwaj electrified in those uh, videos. Live interactive means they will not let you sleep peacefully. Huh? So, doctor, testis is not a source of dihydrotestosterone. Leydig cells secrete testosterone. But dihydrotestosterone peripherally is converted from testosterone by the 5-alpha reductase enzyme is what you need to remember. Phenyl ketonuria is phenylalanine hydroxylase biscuit question. Histamine causes. Ah, Sai Reddy Garu. Histamine causes. Is it correct, Vitara? Your favorite question? No, I'm sorry. Which was answered correctly by. Who answered correctly? Girija, no? Histamine acts on ECL cells to lead to parietal cells to increase H plus ion production, HCL. So it increases the gastric sac. Did you answer this wrong? Huh? Bronchoconstriction of vasodilation. Histamine causes bronchoconstriction. In anaphylaxis reaction, released by mast cells. Here it is reverse, no? What you read, you should not do wrong in the MCQ. That is your responsibility. I can't do anything about it. No confusion. How will you think? 
no confusion if miss world comes and asks you to give a french kiss will you confuse hi krishna reddy like that you should huh? most common enzyme deficient in urea cycle carbamyl phosphate synthase one you wanted to keep that but uh, girija misled you huh? fit no kada correct ga salu yesterday yesterday we discussed about uridine uh, orotic acid urea for orotic acid urea there are two types girija one is uh, it's a part of uh, uridine uh, synthase deficiency other is carbamyl trans uh, myelase uh, uh, deficiency but here you will also have hyperammonemia and in here you don't have hyperammonemia that's what we discuss adi niku telisindi okkade enzyme dantla ornithine transcarbamylase is the only enzyme you heard yesterday so you thought that is the most common enzyme deficient how will it become other enzymes also i told no what are all the other things involved come on doctor n acetyl glutamate n acetyl glutamate provide uh, the ammonia bicarbonate to atp is combined by action of the carbon carbamyl phosphate synthase one to form carbamyl phosphate that is converted by ornithine transcarbamylase into uh, for ornithine to citrulline conversion understand so the same bicarbonate ammonia combining to form carbamyl phosphate is also the step you see in pyrimidine biosynthesis but there that carbamyl phosphate synthetase enzyme is called 2 whereas in urea cycle carbamyl phosphate synthetase is called 1 could you get it varsha no no ayyo yes no no this question this point you understood no so tomorrow exam how will you remember girija so many things to remember carbamyl phosphate synthase one is there in urea cycle not in pyrimidine cycle how will you remember simple girija urea cycle means urine urine means what we will ask in the one finger in the school days so cps carbamyl phosphate synthase one is two is the got it hmm. wow good to see 20 online classmates they are becoming very popular people offering free classes huh? yesterday some student was asking Sir, mock test also free, sir. <laughs> Then I said I can give, I can give free, but the only thing is don't tell the students who paid free. <laughs> huh? So, yeah. See, everything online can be given free. There is nothing. Uh, I mean, those students who can pay will pay. Those who don't want to. those who can't there is nothing like can't uh, i can't afford to pay after mbbs is there anything what do you say teja teja works hard work and earns a little money as a duty doctor and still teja also paid why not there is no poverty only two things in the world doctor laziness richness there is nothing called poverty if we are lazy we are always impoverished so there is a reason remember that next 6 months wonderful effort you have done you are earning 1.2 crore rupees 6 months 1.2 crores never in your lifetime you will earn this much money 20 lakhs per month you are earning right mm. so girija tell daddy that uh, the fee i paid 25000 is only registration fee sir once i get the seat the sir is going to take 10% of 1.2 crores huh? <laughs> pyridoxal phosphate 
typically is a coenzyme in glycogen analysis which enzyme in glycogen analysis glycogen phosphorylase breaks the glycogen and releases one glucose in that glycogen as glucose one phosphate so that enzyme is called glycogen phosphorylase what is the glycogen storage disorder that occur because of deficiency of glycogen phosphorylase called as mccardell's disease glycogen phosphorylase in the muscle is called mccardell's disease and what will happen in this people of mccardell if the glycogen cannot be able to release glucose one phosphate that glucose into plasma cannot be cannot be released so that is the reason they suffer frequent hypoglycemic attacks understand so that is the problem of mccardell right once more glycogen storage disorders what are all the enzymes what are the disorder names von geier means what mccardell means what huh the dirty list you need to remember anyway in biochemistry i will tell you what are all the dirty things you need to remember peptidyl transferase is a ribozyme is what you need to remember so what do you mean by ribosome ribozyme ribozyme ka matlab kya hota hai if a ribosome has a peptidyl transferase function that is a peptide group is there no peptide which is a nucleus of amino acids that is being transferred peptidyl transferase activity is possessed by ribosome then that is called ribozyme is what you need to remember now which ribosome in eukaryotes is having the peptidyl transferase activity 60s ribosomal subunit which is 28s has got the peptidyl transferase component and act as a ribozyme is what you need to remember then once more one of the dirty things you need to remember is how will rifampicin work chloramphenicol work tetracycline work they all work by affecting the protein synthesis so chloramphenicol binds to the 23s ribosomal rna and inhibits the peptide bond formation that is the mechanism of chloramphenicol similarly macrolide antibiotics what are macrolide antibiotics that you know doctor macrolides which one are called macrolides huh very good azithromycin hmm azithromycin so i went to join gipmer in preventive medicine md after that the professor said you are misfit and 6 months later he terminated me actually i still have that letter dr murli you are not fit to be a psm guy better find different avenues i fell on his feet i have a little kid wife your stipend is my life sir please sir get out he said because every day while going in bus with the jipper students i was conducting a quiz program to them in <laughs> medicine microbiology surgery i used to write mcq books in the mbbs days only i used to write second year onwards so another post graduate who was joined along with me felt little jealous how this man become popular with all the undergraduate students he went and reported to hod hod and paradox is that hod did md general medicine and md preventive medicine guy he called me and said what is this nonsense going every day in the community medicine bus get out he said i fell on his feet but because he threw me away i came back to hyderabad started coaching program and joined in md general medicine so always remember everything is for our good right if uh, a boy dumped for our good right if a boy married for our good because we got a slave for lifetime to do the service to us right ha huh. then doctor 
These are all live vaccines except the Salk vaccine, which is a killed vaccine. These are all motile except Clevisiella, E. coli, Salmonella, Citrobacter are all mobile. Surface antigens typically immunoglobulins are seen on B cells. Once more, differences between T cells, B cells. I leave the literature in your uh, explanatory booklet. Please do review. Secondary immune response comes from IgG. IgG crosses placenta. IgG is secondary response. IgM is, how do you know whether it is a new infection or a old infection? IgM is always primary immune response. IgG is, uh, then what are warm antibodies, cold antibodies in autoimmune hemolytic anemia? Warm hota hai garam. So IgG. Murli is cool guy. So cold antibodies are all IgM. So these things you should not forget. Cytomegalovirus. It is DNA virus. And under CD4 count, I mean, virus is eliminated by phoscarnet. Phoscarnet. Abba. Winner, I put in a phoscarnet. Acyclovir winner, Adyaksha. Adyaksha. Acyclovir, phoscarnet, Delva Kunda. Need PG, both a custom Adyaksha. Ah, okay, what is acyclovir? What is phoscarnet? They both are antiviral drugs. If you give acyclovir, it will enter the virus <clears throat> and uh, it will become phosphorylated and uh, you have uh, nucleotides now which are required for DNA formation in the virus for it to replicate. So, acyclovir phosphate is having a structure of nucleotide phosphate. So, what are the various nucleotides required for DNA formation? Purines, pyrimidines, adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine. So, this nucleotide phosphate-like appearance Structure will be acyclovir phosphate. Agree? And uh, in place of the nucleotide phosphate, the acyclovir phosphate will go and sit in the DNA. So that will destroy the DNA structure. So the virus cannot replicate. That is the funda of what? Giving acyclovir because it is a competitive inhibitor for the nucleotide incorporation into DNA. Agree? But for doing that, a cyclovir need to first convert into a phosphate derivative. For that, you have a kinase called thymidylate kinase, which is there in the virus, which is there in our body, the host. So the thymidylate kinase need to convert the acyclovir into acyclovir phosphate, then it act like a competitive inhibitor to the nucleotide incorporation into DNA and that's how it prevents the DNA replication of the virus. So act like an antiviral. What will happen to the, how will you get acyclovir resistance? The virus got need PG notes of Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. Then it quickly studied how to get resistance to this acyclovir. Then it found it is all this thymidylate kinase of the host is causing the phosphorylation of acyclovir. Then it will make that thymidylate kinase to stop phosphorylating the acyclovir. So that is the cause of the resistance. So then once more, what is written below that line? High yield factor, next high yield factor. If the virus happened to read the need PG notes given by Dr. Murli Bharadwaj and learned how to develop resistance, then use phoscarnet. Because phoscarnet does not require a phosphorylation before it goes in. 
competitively inhibit the dna formation so for acyclovir resistance cases what is the drug of choice foscarnet because foscarnet does not require prior phosphorylation even if thymidylate kinase is uh, mutated by the virus still foscarnet will be functional so virus thinks uh, it is intelligent who is intelligent on this planet human beings are intelligent understand next which mycobacterium affects very good sachendra alluru acyclovir resistance we use foscarnet super satya you should come to hyderabad and attend along all of, with all of us don't worry as the days pass lot of once upon a time i used to deliver a sunday grantus discussion to there used to be another hall in the same complex 150 students used to sit there and then we used to process the omr sheets and give the ranking also right very competitive they used to fight some of them became toppers every year joined jipmer they'll be thinking murli bharadwaj one of my student the other day she met she was saying sir every time i do hysterectomy i remember all our class humor right i keep telling uh, to my colleagues that day sir said like this etc i said good at least you remember until your knife goes into every uterus <laughs> mycobacterium exclusively affects the skin is merinum ulcerans right is the one beta blockers what are the side effects of beta blockers bradycardia suppose if beta blocker toxicity is there what is the drug of choice doctor and favorite question of the examiner glucagon by so on the heart you have beta receptors if you given too many beta blockers they all got blocked right then your glucagon is still capable of stimulating the beta receptors which are blocked by beta blocker so glucagon is used for not beta agonist don't answer salbutamol will be given for beta blocker toxicity <laughs> huh? logically correct but not true lipid soluble beta blockers will lead to bad dreams can you once more there is a big classification beta blockers which are intrinsic sympathomimetic activity which have a membrane stabilizing effect which are erythmogenic which are lipid soluble beta blocker classification big story then we will come back postural hypotension is a side effect of alpha blocker can you give me one alpha blocker varsha that you know propylenol is beta blocker prazosin prazosin tasmulosin ha huh? so all josins they are all alpha blockers how do why are they used in uh, hypertension alpha blockers kai ko use karte alpha blocker ko pehla alpha 1 alpha 2 receptors beta 1 beta 2 receptors quickly tell varsha where is beta 1 receptor 1 beta 1 heart 1 arrow rama has one girl called sita beta 1 we have two lungs beta 2 acts on bronchi smooth muscle relaxes them and beta 2 agonist will cause bronco dilatation beta 1 increases heart rate stimulation then alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 1 is there on the blood vessel and uh, it is there in the post synaptic receptor and alpha 1 stimulation lead to smooth muscle constriction leading to vaso constriction alpha 2 is there in the brain but it is number is 2 but it is presynaptic and any alpha 2 stimulation will lead to inhibition of sympathetic outflow from the brain so that reason it will lead to act like a 
anti hypertensive once more alpha 2 is pre synaptic where in the brain any stimulation not inhibition stimulation of it will lead to inhibition of the sympathetic output and if sympathetic output is diminished what will happen vessels dilate sympathetic vessel constricts so that is the reason we use drugs like clonidin which acts like a alpha 2 agonist decreasing the sympathetic outflow leading to anti hypertensive effect whereas we use alpha 1 blocker to prevent vasoconstriction acting on alpha 1 receptors in the presynaptic membrane will you remember this what actually you didn't get okay no problem second take beta 1 beta 2 heart lungs this lead to bronchodilatation this lead to increased heart rate alpha 1 alpha 2 this is on the blood vessels and this is postsynaptic postsynaptic and uh, stimulation of this lead to vaso constriction alpha 2 in the brain and uh, it is presynaptic and stimulation of that will inhibit sympathetic outflow and that will lead to vaso dilatation so what do we use to treat hypertension alpha 2 agonist or alpha 1 antagonist if you use alpha 1 antagonist vaso constriction stops and vaso dilatation occur if you use alpha 2 agonist like clonidin alpha 1 antagonist is prazosin right this is sin that is din clonidin huh? and uh, that lead to alpha 2 agonism leading to vaso dilatation then beta 1 beta blocker decreases heart rate decreases myocardial oxygen demand and even on the vessels it lead to vaso dilatation because it will stop the effect of uh, sympathetic uh, i mean catecholamines on the vessels also but mainly on the heart this much you understood no any confusion huh. clonidin is prazosin is alpha 1 antagonist propranolol is beta blocker means beta blocker means beta 1 or beta 2 so accordingly beta blockers are divided into selective beta blockers and which only act on beta 1 and non selective so if you take a drug like metoprolol propranolol etanolol nedolol they differ whether they are selective or not selective understand so once more we will discuss in beta blocker classification another story is there okay for now you remember so why postural hypotension occur if you give alpha blocker so alpha blocker what is it doing it is alpha receptor alpha 1 receptor lead to vaso constriction alpha 1 blocker lead to vaso dilatation so from a lying down position suddenly you stood then what will happen all the venous blood is gravitated down the amount of venous return coming to the heart is decreased then the heart pumping blood also decreased so cardiac output that's the reason bp will fall bp will fall if your cardiac output decreases right so to overcome that what our body will do immediately it will vasoconstrict 
and this fallen BP is restored. Physical, physical, everything physical should be there. Otherwise, this guy is lying down, Amma. This guy stood up. By standing up, what happened? Decreased venous return. Decreased preload to his heart. Preload. That decreased stroke volume. That decreased BP. Systolic BP. And uh, as a reflex to that, what will happen? His sympathetic system will stimulate his blood vessels, leading to vasoconstriction. But if you have given alpha blocker, what will happen? This reflex vasoconstriction that is the expected to happen when you stand doesn't happen. That is the reason the people who are given uh, alpha blocker drug, what will you tell? Annapurna Magaru. Miru, jump just leva kandi. Tatakar, pilchar gadan japi. Nitharlinch leva ngane. So, Annapurna Magaru, please don't jump and uh, run because uh, grandpa called for coffee. Slowly get up, slowly turn. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Then uh, your uh, body is adjusted, then you get up and go. Even when you go, if you are taking alpha blockers, chance is there that you are suffering from postural hypertension and suddenly you can go into Sinko and fall in the arms of Sriman Narayana and die. There is a possibility. <laughs> so how do we kill the patients? No, no, we don't kill. Alpha blockers are good drugs. Now, doctor, if we go this slow, we can't finish 200. I'll try to run fast. <clears throat> but keep a mark. I should take revenge on beta blockers, alpha blockers. How can I be so dumb? I don't know what is clonidine, what is progestin, nonsense. That is what you be prepared. When the time comes, no, when I teach beta blockers, cardiology review is going to come. Right? That time, you remember this mock test and be prepared. Okay? Then glucagon is used in the poisoning of beta blockers. Neoadjuvant chemotherapy of cancer esophagus. What do you use? 5 chlorouracil plus cisplatin. In the breast cancer, we use a regime called CMF regime. What does it include? Breast cancer. Cyclophosphamide, M for methotrexate, 5 for F for 5 fluorouracil is what we typically use, is what you need to remember. Now, doctor, that's very good. Satchendra says, uh, uh, yeah, Satchendra says first dose phenomena. Hmm? First dose phenomena. Now, what is the mechanism of action of all these drugs? Metronidazole acts on DNA synthesis, penicillin cell wall synthesis inhibitor, chloramphenicol protein synthesis, even tetracycline also protein synthesis. So tetracycline inhibits the 30S ribosomal unit. Uh, yesterday we said no, linezolid. What is linezolid? In the protein synthesis, there is a stage of initiation where an initiation complex is formed. That is the one which is prevented from forming done by linezolid. So linezolid also is one of the drugs that lead to protein synthesis inhibition in the bacteria. Okay. Then rifamycin, how does it act? It acts on the prokaryotic DNA, DNA to mRNA by inhibiting DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. That is how rifamycin acts. Tetracyclines and TG cycline, they block the A site on the ribosome, preventing the binding of amino acyl tRNA, which brings the new amino acid to be incorporated into peptide synthesis. So that is how it also affects the bacterial 
protein synthesis. Once more, there are totally 12 drugs. And what is their mechanism of action? Like a parrot, you must rattle out in the tomorrow's exam. Before that, how the protein synthesis occurred in biochemistry, we will revise. Okay? Ah. I leave the literature for you, doctor. If we start discussing this, we are done. But anyway, you remember this list and develop some mnemonic, doctor. Chloramphenicol, erythromycin, clindamycin, linezolin. They're all 50S ribosomal subunit inhibitors. Right? Uh, 30S ribosomal inhibitors are what? Uh, tetracyclines and aminoglycosides. Okay? Uh, aminoglycosides. Now, doctor, if the bladder is overactive, what will you do? How do you treat? So tell me, Girija, with the limited knowledge we have acquired in the past one month, d muscle, when uh, parasympathetic stimulation occurs and acetylcholine comes and binds, will it contract the bladder or relax the bladder? Super! And... Uh, Overactive bladder means it is hypercontractile. How will you discourage its overaction? Acetylcholine inhibitor. But acetylcholine is also required for your salivation. Salivation. So if you give an anticholinergic drug, it will also inhibit the salivation. That's the reason it leads to xerostomia. So which among these drugs is anticholinergic in action? That is the Challenge. Oxybutynin. Understand? So generally all, whether you are using atropin or uh, whether you are using oxybutynin, these are all anticholinergic. So these are all, what are the anticholinergic effects? Dry mouth, difficulty to urinate, constipation, blurred vision, giddiness and delirium. Why there will be difficulty to urinate? Because anticholinergic will weaken the detrusor, one point. Then the sphincter is there, no doctor. It will make the sphincter to become increased constriction. One side exit is closed. Here, there is no power for the bladder to pump. So that is the reason they go into retention. Narcoanalysis. You tell, you give this drug, you are a CBI officer. You give this drug and uh, your uh, uh, prisoner will speak the truth. Scopolamine. Right? So, Girija, don't take scopolamine and go to need PG exam. Just because truth will come out. The problem is the truth that you know will come out. <laughs> and the truth you that you know is not the correct answer. <laughs> So, now, osteoblastic secondary is predominantly by prostate. All other are osteolytic. So, you should remember the list, doctor. Predominantly lytic are kidney, lungs, GIT, melanoma. Predominantly osteoblastic is prostatic adenocarcinoma, colon and carcinoma breast. Some way you need to remember this. Which type of lung cancer maximum paraneoplastic syndromes are seen? Small cell carcinoma. And uh, hypercalcemia is the paraneoplastic manifestation of which type of lung cancer? Beautiful. Squamous cell carcinoma. Cushing syndrome is the paraneoplastic of small cell. Eaton Lambert is paraneoplastic of Come on, Varsha. Eaton Lambert syndrome is paraneoplastic of small cell carcinoma. Myasthenia gravis is paraneoplastic of Monica. Myasthenia gravis. What do you see? Which malignancy? Which uh, tumor? 
mediastinal tumor it is anterior mediastinal tumor which one thymoma ani apkuna kada meere cheppin answer ha malaki ivalla marchipothe itla okay can you tell what are the four t's about the anterior mediastinal mass tomorrow when girija become professor no she will kill the students <laughs> come on guys what are the four t's about the anterior mediastinal tumors right so now what are the infections that can be transmitted during blood transfusion hepatitis cmv dengue but not q fever q fever how will it come aerosols by if you are milking the cow to get the milk then uh, the farmer can get that aerosols and can get q fever it is the only rickettsial disease not caused by the bite of the mite it is caused by aerosols so there is no eschar eschar is because of the bite of the mite but since q fever is by inhalation is the only rickettsial disease no eschar and aerosol transmitted then which is not associated with malignancy chromosome 13 deletion down syndrome neurofibromatosis they are all malignant not turner syndrome so deletion of 13 can cause retinoblastoma and also osteosarcoma paraneoplastic syndrome where you don't have antibodies lambert eden is because of butch antibodies varsha correct em sari and lambert eden nagalukunnaru veru so calcium right post synaptic acetylcholine receptor antibodies are seen in myasthenia gravis paka hmm so you need to remember limbic encephalopathy stiff person syndrome lambert eaton the in all these paraneoplastic antibodies are there not in necrotizing myelopathy understand uh there is a encephalomyelitis paraneoplastic syndrome so those who have a cancer they produce anti who aka anna1 antibodies that lead to encephalomyelitis brain is inflamed spinal cord inflamed because of having internal malignancy right then what is stiff person syndrome patients who are having small cell lung cancer breast cancer thymoma or hodgkins lymphoma they develop muscle stiffness rigidity lot of pain that's called stiff person syndrome understand so then there is a paraneoplastic cerebellar degeneration which can occur there is anti yo anti tri anti tr antibodies are involved no problem no problem you'll slowly learn apoptosis doctor neat pg is not for is not for 199 only 198 correct so apoptosis without that there is no question paper so what is true about apoptosis did you answer this correct sai ready sir ha d ya giri jaavuthunda గిరిజ చెప్పిన మాట వినకు సాయి నువ్వు అక్కడ కూర్చోకు నెక్స్ట్ టైం నుంచి తేజాతో కూర్చో అప్పుడు నువ్వు కరెక్ట్ పెడతావు డోంట్ లిసన్ టు గిరిజ లిసన్ టు తేజ బికాస్ షీ టుక్స్ కోపల మైన్ అండ్ కేమ్ షీ ఈస్ టాకింగ్ ట్రూత్ దట్ షీ నోస్ so apoptosis non inflammatory is apoptosis it is cell shedding if inflammation is there that is not called apoptosis florence test typically detects 
by detecting the choline. These are all the tests used to detect uh, semen. Florence test, Barberio test. Have you heard of it, uh, uh, Doctor? Barberio, Florence test, uh, acid phosphatase. We will have. There are totally thousand points in forensic medicine. High yield facts. Uh, around uh, 400, 400 uh, paragraphs are there. Maze mein padai karenge. IPC sections kya hota hai? How to murder the husband? Put him in the box. Then under which section we can escape? Everything we will. Huh? Horror movies. So, ammonium molybdate, creatinine phosphokinase. These are all the various uh, tests to uh, detect. According to MCI, how many days you need to maintain the medical records of the patient doctor? Three years. Medical records. Formaldehyde, which is injected for embalming, contains 40%. Dowry death, you can implicate uh, husband up to seven years. Beyond it, it is your death. Right? Up to seven years, be careful. Right? Don't abuse the wife. Sorry, ready. After seven years, you can beat her. Anything you can do, I can protect you. Huh? <laughs> so... Uh, except in uh, after death, the blood usually remains fluid. But pneumonia-like conditions underlying cause of death. Except. Huh? Huh? Septicemia, because septicemia, all the clotting factors are exhausted because of your disseminate intravascular coagulation. So after you die for the blood to clot, there are no clotting factors available. So blood remains fluid. Carbon monoxide poisoning, it remains fluid. Hypofibrinogenemia also, it remains fluid. Human development index doesn't have IMR. So you should remember physical quality of life index versus HDA. Did you answer this correctly? Pakka. Good girl. Infant mortality, life expectancy at age 1 is in PQLI. Whereas life expectancy at birth is HDA. You should not have confusion. How will you remember life expectancy at the age of one? And PQLI may I also is like one. Oh, HDA also has one, no? Oh, oh. Ah, that's right. Okay, okay. You can't remember that way. Otherwise, by birth we are human, no? We are not dog. We become dog later. <laughs> When, when chasing the girls in medical college, we become dog. Until that, we are human. At birth, we are human. So, human development index has life expectancy at birth. Adult literacy rate. Real GDP per capita. They are all there. Hmm? Now, what is the measure of infectivity, doctor? Secondary attack rate. Iodine concentration should be 15 ppm. At consumer level, iodine concentration. Case control study is for odds ratio, AD by BC. Residual chlorine level should be 0 0.5 for one hour. You can answer correctly, huh? Sai? Super. Then what is except about the PQLI? GDP is not there. HDI is having GDP, huh? Mm -hmm. Ultra low volume fogging is done with? Of with the melathion sampling in non homogeneous group, how will you do the non homogeneous group? Means what you have 10 year olds, 20 year old, 30 year old, everyone is there. So you try to divide them according to the age and then do the sampling. That's called stratified random sampling. Cluster sampling is typically done. In conditions, sexually transmitted diseases, we do cluster sampling. When you are doing a research on STDs. Hmm? ESI benefit scheme is confinement 12 weeks, miscarriage 6 weeks, sickness arising out of confinement is 30 days. Just recheck this. Because as for 
I, I have not yet prepared for this uh, to verify the answer. This is as far I know. I, I, please recheck that. What is the target in uh, anyway? RNTCP is gone, so seventy percent is the target in RNTCP. Cyclopropagative means multiplication plus development. In uh, non-communicable diseases, it is the primary. Primary prevention is the most cost-effective intervention. Huh? Is what you need to remember. Now comes the masala questions. I mean, remaining all you can do looking at the key. Here, Dr. Murli Bharadwaj is needed. A young patient with anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia with the bone marrow biopsy. How will you know whether it is AML or ALL? Huh? So, typically, trap. Where do you see trap, doctor? Tartrate resistant acid phosphatase stain is typically seen in hairy cell leukemia. Understand? Hairy cell leukemia. So, uh, now if you look at the other options, Sudan black is to stain myeloblast against lymphoblast. Is it, it is accepted. Ideally, it should be accepted because myeloperoxidase is for once more to identify myeloblast. Tartrate resistant acid phosphatase for hairy cell leukemia. Leukocyte alkaline phosphatase is to differentiate between leukemoid reaction and a real leukemia. If you want to differentiate, we use the lab score. And uh, so that is the point you need to remember. Now, 47 year old women, dark stools, painful fingers on both hands, large liver and spleen. Possibility of polycythemia, rubra, vira, bone marrow is being shown. What do you see in this patient? Yesterday I told you, you no, know, secondary polycythemia versus polycythemia, rubra, vira. Still, we did not come to that point. In secondary polycythemia, you have hypoxia leading to high erythropoietin. That stimulates the RBC production. That leads to high hematocrit leading to polycythemia, which is secondary. So hypoxia is the beginning. Whereas rubra vira means it is a malignant condition in the bone marrow that is excessively producing erythroid because of a mutation in jack stat gene. Here it does not require erythropoietin. So erythropoietin is typically Low with a raised cell mass. That is what you see in polycythemia. Rubra vira is what you need to remember. How do you differentiate secondary polycythemia from polycythemia rubra vira? Hypoxia. Erythropoietin will be high in secondary polycythemia. Whereas normal oxygen, but uh, erythropoietin is low in case along with jack mutations and all in polycythemia rubra vera is what you need to understand now Now, 29 year old, shortness of breath, when walking up the stairs, she is starting to struggle with yoga classes. Earlier, that was not a problem for her. And the 
Typically, her heart rate is 90, BP is 119. And recently, she became vegetarian in the morning only, has time for tea before heading to work. Uh, what do you expect to be increased in this patient? What is your answer? Come on, you are right. It is anemia. Which anemia most likely? Iron deficiency. In iron deficiency, what is increased? Ferritin. Beautiful. Transferrin and TIBC are in yesterday only now. We studied. Uh, how do you differentiate anemia of chronic disease versus iron deficiency anemia? What happens to ferritin in IDA? In uh, anemia of chronic disease? Increases. How is serum iron in IDA? Decreased. Anemia of chronic disease? Decreased. How is TIBC? Increased in and how about uh, ACD? I gave one list now. Brother, please check that uh, sure short question. Hmm? Six. Huh? It is how do you know that it is iron deficiency anemia? How do we know that this is iron deficiency anemia? Because she's a vegetarian, is not good for, uh, it is not a digestible iron. Meat, uh, correct. There is nothing suggestive of beta, vitamin B12 uh, related things, no? Hemoglobin will be decreased, ferritin is decreased, myoglobin is not affected. Then the only thing that increases is Transferring in iron deficiency anemia. That's how you have to dissect the question. Irija, it is tapu vertegan can resign yesta. Do you have this photograph in your question paper? Uh, what is this? Hyper segmented neutrophil, which is characteristic of super. So it is pernicious. At least this you answer correctly. You? Yeah. You? Pakka? Hey. See, I have a, I, I'm asking my developer to prepare a, another bot for the teacher. In that, if I type your phone number, no, I'll get your entire uh, uh, performance report. What Girija answered right, wrong, how much time she took uh, did she copy from uh, uh, Sairedi's paper? Huh? So all these things we will know. Suresh, next time she Sairedi's have to be a bit of. Discussion ke liya aagya ho. Right? Huh. Very good. I'm happy that you all answered correctly. Our Monday to Saturday is showing effect. 47 year old, recent ill health. No organomegaly, MCV 105, pancytopenia. What is bone marrow showing? What is bone marrow showing? Pancytopenia means immediately what comes to your mind? Plastic enemy. Did you answer correctly? Pakka. Hey, Monica. Pakka. Promise. Good. So, aplastic anemia. Now, tell me, doctor, pancytopenia with normal bone marrow. What are the two conditions that you need to have in mind? This we discussed. This we discussed. If you don't answer, I will cry. What is the graveyard of uh, WBC, RBC and uh, platelets? Spleen. So if the splenomegaly is there or asplenia is there? Splenomegaly. So bone marrow is producing normal RBC, WBC platelets. But when they travel to spleen, they all three were destroyed due to splenomegaly. 
so splenomegaly lead to pancytopenia with a normal bone marrow not a aplastic marrow one more condition i told it is a rheumatological disorder where auto antibody segregates wbc rbc and platelets are produced seen in the females lead to butterfly rash కొంచెం నన్ను యాపి చేయచ్చుగా ఒక తూరు కరెక్ట్గా ఆన్సర్ చేసే ఈ ఎమ్మి గట్లా ఆన్సర్ చేయదేంటే సో ప్లీజ్ రిమెంబర్ స్ప్లినమెగాలి ఎస్ఎలి ప్యాన్సైటోపీనియా విత్ ఏ నార్మల్ మ్యారో ఈస్ వాట్ టు రిమెంబర్ వావ్ గుడ్ టు సీ ట్వంటీ టూ ఆన్లైన్ స్టూడెంట్స్ డాక్టర్ మజారా so just a mock test is not enough discussion should be there right so i am so happy 22 online and uh, six sitting here is uh, you also opened in uh, youtube or what no no ha huh. so 22 plus 628 my regular number few years back used to be 150 students sitting here primary health center doctors ayyo spleen is on left side liver is on right side from there i need to start to them is it sir where is pancreas sir lower abdomen sir upper abdomen are thank god it is in abdomen you know that doctor i will write to health minister to give you an increment <laughs> right the eldest student was dr surya prakash at the age of 52 when he himself has osteoporotic bones he took ms orthopedics <laughs> he used to say age is just a number sir who said uh, i said you know by getting an ms orthopedics what will you do at 52 i will do knee replacement sir first time will do my own replacement and everybody's replacement <laughs> right even at 52 i made a phc doctor to get into ms orthopedics right so you still uh, have a long way another 26 years you can take coaching varsha 65 year old man reporting that he is worried that there is no energy in the last two weeks to be romantic with his wife then uh, suffered from fevers unresponsive to paracetamol and bleeding from the gums then that is a serious matter and in the image sudan black b so what do you see isko kya bolte hain no idea first and last i'm telling this is called r rod a u e r r rod which is a feature of myeloblast so that is the reason what is he having aml what did i tell you need pg not for 200 but one is inevitably from leukemia one inevitably from lymphoma 198 only if you do the question wrong in leukemia lymphoma insult to shahan shah dr murli baladwaj akbar <coughs> huh? so i'm sending you all for uh, fighting with jangis khan huh? gori mahmud to need pg ab sab talwar ke tar ke jaise chamakte hue shatruon ka sar ko kaat ke neat pg mein 200 ko 190 maar ke aana hai aur bolna hai ki ye 54000 mein hai 54000 points notes of murli bharatwaj mein hai quran geeta aur bible understand hmm. so 70 year old man complaints of tiredness fatigue weight loss splenomegaly and uh, a mutation shown what is that 922 very easy what is your answer 
Philadelphia chromosome, have you heard? Uh, what is that? Chronic myeloid leukemia. Chronic myeloid leukemia, what do you use, doctor? Imatinib mesylate. Imatinib mesylate is the one which is used in chronic. So on the chromosome number 9, you have ABL gene. Chromosome number 22, BCR gene. And because of this translocation, what will happen? The BCR and ABL together form a fusion gene, which is also called Philadelphia chromosome. Because of that, the tyrosine kinase activity become excessive. That is the cause for the CML. So how do you treat? You give imatinib. Imatinib is the tyrosine kinase inhibitor, which blocks the activity of BCR, ABL. Where is ABL? Chromosome 9. Where is BCR? Chromosome 20. How will you remember which is ABL, which is BCR? <laughs> okay. ABL, BCR. One is 9, one is 22. 9 small numbers. So ABL, 22 big numbers. So, but don't think 2 is smaller number than 9 and then go for ABL, then Satya Nash ho jaye. <laughs> so, doctor, 27 year old. Hey, our online students, I request them to call your other friends also to join our uh, every Sunday afternoon NEET PG masala discussion. 27 year old has rheumatic mitral stenosis, is developing the ECG which is being shown here. What do you see here? Bolavita, what do you see? Every P wave is not followed by AQRS. Every P wave is not followed by AQRS, which is typically called atrial fibrillation. So in atrial fibrillation, how do you prevent embolism and stroke risk? You give warfarin. So warfarin, what should be the INR therapeutic uh, level of warfarin INR INR should be kept between 2 to 3 so we don't use warfarin but nicumar alone is the derivative of the warfarin which we use we get a tablet called acitrom acitrom 2 mg acitrom 3 mg you will basically give this in order to keep the INR between 2 to 3 whenever the patient is having Atrial fibrillation. 20 year old, dull pain in the lower back. And that pain is more when he bend forward to lift the things. Commonly, what is the activity done to bend forward to lift the things? All of our housewives and everyone, even house husbands in the COVID time, when they are doing the brooming. So what will you tell to Kamalamma? Kamalamma, make spinal stenosis. So don't bend forward and do the broom sticking. Right? Ask your husband, Kamalakar, to start brooming the house. So, a severe episode in the last two days. X ray shows a lumbar compression fracture. Normocytic anemia. Then uh, what is this you are able to see, doctor? Yum spike. What is this called? Yum spike in multiple myeloma because of increased immunoglobulin, which is diagnostic of multiple myeloma. So multiple, multiple myeloma. So Multiple myeloma, many things are implicated that lead to multiple myeloma, but hereditary multiple myeloma luckily is not there. Mummy's multiple myeloma doesn't come to daughter. 44 year old man, recurrent pain, fever, pallor, malai, shortness of breath. Right? Then uh, there is a pancytopenia. You palpated a large spleen. Agreed? 
So, which investigation differentiates between a plastic anemia versus hypersplenism as a cause of uh, of this uh, condition? Yesterday, what did I tell you? How do you differentiate uh, iron deficiency anemia or uh, plastic anemia versus and uh, hemolytic anemia? Only hemolytic anemia will show brisk reticulocytosis because bone marrow is producing normal uh, RBCs, but they are being broken down in the periphery. That's the reason bone marrow continuing to compensate. In the process, it is producing a lot of reticulocytes. As soon as we studied, nah, if the reticulocyte index is more than 3, it is indicative of hemolytic anemia. Less than 1% means it is indicative of a plastic anemia. Did you answer this correct? Sai, answered correct? Too much Sai. You might have met me in first year Sai. Right? Uh -huh. So, <clears throat> you know a famous dialogue called, you might have met me when I was young. After 30 years, after 25 years, you will have a silver jubilee uh, function with your classmates, MBBS classmates. We had uh, 25 years later. So, while going to that function, I asked my girl, uh, will you like to join? She said, uh, no, no, all your classmates, no, you go. Uh, because it's your classmates, why I should come, I'll be out of place. So I went. Then when I have seen my classmates, I felt how much misomorphic they have become. <laughs> then I came back home and said, Darling, how sweet you are. Thank God all those girls rejected me <laughs> in MBBS days because I was looking like Veerappan. Somehow you thought I read Harrison and all that and that's the reason. Okay, bade banke mal banega, you accepted me. Otherwise, my life would have been screwed up if I would have married all the top gynecologists, top teachers, huh? dermatologists who don't have time to go to parlor or to do exercise, they all have become isomorphic. Oh, so sometimes, thank God you did not meet me. When I was young is a better statement, right? So Sai, no problem. At least now you met, I will make you topper. 66 year old man, shillings test show, vitamin B12, malabsorption, weakness, tingling in the limbs and sore tongue. And once more, what do you see here? Hypersegmented neutrophils. So what lead to pernicious anemia, doctor? Anti-intrinsic factor antibodies. Five-year-old girl has got these important features of petechiae. And uh, hepatosplenomegaly is also there. What is the best investigation you want to do? Hepatosplenomegaly is also there, means think about possibility of a leukemia. So how do you define leukemia? More than 20% of the bone marrow cells, if they become blast, that defines the leukemia. So how does leukemia can present? Uh, whenever there is a leukemia, that can affect the WBC count to come down, that lead to infections and that can present like fever and infection. Somebody thought that it is a simple fever and found to be having blast cells and found to be leukemic, acute leukemia. Uh, Suresh, close your ending. Can just for five minutes can put, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, understand? So, 51 year old man, very nice question. Hypercalcemia, Benz Jones proteinuria, diffuse back pain, Light eclisions in the vertebrae. What is Benz Jones protein? It is the light chain of the 
immunoglobulin is called Benz Jones, which is seen in multiple myeloma. Then, doctor, 66 year old with stiffness and weakness in climbing stage. Bilateral wasting, fasciculations, knee extension is 4 by 5. Brisk knee and ankle reflexes are elicited. Also, Babinski was positive. Babinski was positive. So what is the most likely diagnosis, doctor? What are you on? Upper limbs, element signs, lower limbs, UMN signs. 23-year-old is stabbed in the neck. Once stabilized, uh, MRI is being shown. Hemisection of the segment is shown. What do you expect? So you should know. What is the condition called, doctor, where there is a hemisection of spinal cord? Very good. Sick word, sick word. Which sick word? Not black sick word. It is the brown sick word. Yesterday we discussed uh, four conditions that lead to bone marrow... Suppression. What are those syndromes? You remember? Diamond. Black fun. Then? Huh? Schwannman. Diamond. Then tar. Thrombocytopenia with absent radii. Fanconi's anemia. Dyskeratosis congenita. You remember? Yesterday we discussed now. Where do you find three phalanges of the thumb? Diamond black fun syndrome. Okay? Ah. So, no problem. Now, you understood motor neuron disease, right? Now, brown sequid may, what tracts are decusating at the spinal cord level? What are going uh, ipsilateral? Dorsal column is not at crossed. Then, the spinothalamic tract carries pain and temperature and already crossed in spinal cord. So, right side hemisection, if it is there, that will affect the left side pain and pain and temperature. Because left side fibers came to right side, no? So, if you have cut right side then left side pain and temperature gone dorsal column will be ipsilateral then how about uh, uh, um, so that is a simple point right hemisection means there will be absent sensation of temperature in the left side finish 23 year old complains that her right leg has become progressively stiff progressively clumsy she has six beads of clonus, upgoing plantar. Then there is a pale disc in ophthalmoscopy, which is optic neuritis. And optic neuritis will lead to, if you look through the uh, fundus, what will you find? The place where optic nerve head is there, no? It will be pale. That is called optic disc. Optic disc will be pale if there is optic neuritis. So, which condition lead to optic neuritis and also clumsy stiffness means what? When will you become clumsy, stiffness and all? They are all signs of spasticity, upper motor neuron lesion. That means corticospinal tract is affected. Right? And MRI, what is it showing? Demyelinating flocks. So they are all indicative of uh, what? Multiple stenosis. So initial treatment is to give a course of oral steroids is what you need to remember. Agreed, doc? Now in this, country, in this context, I want to tell you, doctor, in the eye, there is a papillary edema. There is a optic neuritis. Optic neuritis. Then uh, what else do you have? That is 
retrobulbar neuritis. Then you have papillitis, the place where optic nerve head comes, there the inflammation is there. Right? So if there is a papillitis, will there be any problem for the patient to see? Yes, there will be a blurring of vision. Blurring of vision. If the papillitis means where optic nerve enters into the retina, varsha, there there is an inflammation. So whenever papillitis is there, patient will have blurring of vision. If you look, if you put a fundus and look into retina, you can see the papillitis. Right? Then, if there is a retrobulbar neuritis, you can't see anything. But patient will have blurring of vision. Then, if there is a papilledema, if you look through fundus, you can see the papilledema. And a papilledema patient can will not have any blurring. He can see clearly. When you have hypertension or rise intracranial tension, lead to papilledema. So what is a very famous uh, adage? You can see, patient can see. What you can see? In papilledema, you can see in the fundoscopy. And patient can see the world. You can see, patient can see. What is your diagnosis? Papilledema. You can't see, patient can't see. Retrobulbar neuritis. You can, you can see, but patient cannot see. Papillitis. You can see, patient cannot see. Papillitis. You cannot see, patient cannot see is retrobulbar neuritis. You can see, patient can see is papilledema. That is what you need to remember. 78 year old right handed male collapses. He seems to follow clear one step commands, but he is very frustrated because he cannot answer the questions. He is unable to lift his right hand or leg. Irregularly, irregular pulse is there. He takes only aspirin and frusamide, and the CT brain is being shown to you, and you are able to see the presence of a infarct. So, what is the infarct that you are able to see? Left cortical infarct. In a right-sided uh, handed individual, which uh, uh, side is dominant? Left. Left. Right? So, when will you get aphasia, speech difficulty? MCA. Middle cerebral artery stroke may, dominant side middle cerebral artery stroke is there, which is left on the right side, that individual. Then you get the Broca's and all these aphasias. ACA is what? Contralateral lower limb monoparesis, commonly confused for a hip fracture. You remember all that or forgot? Neurology. Are pura dillaga ke padaya. Wrong kare to achane lakta unko. Good, good. 79 year old is admitted with left hemiparesis and CT is showing what? Middle cerebral artery infarct. So what is the most important significant factor for stroke? Shouting on the wife. Hypertension lead to stroke. 42 year old man with ataxia, gadolinum enhanced MRI is being shown. What do you see? Periventricular opacities. What are these called as in multiple sclerosis? Which fingers? Dawson's fingers. Periventricular opacities. Like fingers. Dawson's fingers. Neurology mein padaya. Mem sab bhul gaya. Are kaisa ji? Of course. Do maine ho gaya na. To isliye bhulna normal hai. But neurology, we have once more, there is another neurology basic sciences, but in neurology in general medicine, 426 points. If you do one question, neurology wrong also in the mark test.
I will cry. I will cry. So, in multiple sclerosis, which feature gives good prognosis? Female gender. Right? Male multiple sclerosis is more severe than female. Right? Now, 71 year old man, ECG is being shown, atrial fibrillation is being shown, and uh, now the question is, uh, what is the problem of him? Poor night sleep. He got out of bed feeling giddy for a couple of seconds before lights are dimmed around him. Huh. Then uh, after he was shaken back to normal a few minutes after the event. So what is it an example of? Orthostatic hypertension because she is on what treatment? Aspirin, etanol, and prusamide. It is an orthostatic or postural tension, hypotension, because syncope occurs as a result of the reduced cerebral perfusion, and the patient, when he moves from lying to a standing position, is postural hypotension. Simple. So you should know how to differentiate through the clinical history between TIA versus vasovagal syncope versus postural hypotension. Okay, that is the gist of the story. We'll quickly give a five-minute voice break, doctor. Very good. We finished uh, one hour, 46 minutes, sir. That means we'll take three hours to finish uh, 200 questions. Very cruel, eh? On Sunday. What version? Somebody might have told you that uh, need PG preparation can be so bad, eh? All right, five minute break, doctor. Stay online. Don't run away. I will teach you very beautiful points. Stay until 200.
So welcome back to the session, doctor. A 41 year old man complains of terrible headache. Always simple, doctor. Don't even read the remaining part. Male headache is clustered. You answered that correctly? Cluster headache, very good. 49 year old man, sudden onset, painless unilateral visual loss lasting about a minute. Black curtain coming down, he said. And the fundoscopy, what is it showing? A thrombus leading to occlusion of the vessel, which is typical of amaurosis fugax. Because ophthalmic artery is a branch of? Beautiful. And any etheroma in internal carotid will go to ophthalmic artery and affects the retina. Is what you need to remember. 77 year old with urinary tract infection receives antibiotics and responding well. She is eating her lunch when she suddenly drops her fork. And what did she develop, doctor? Facial palsy. Right? Which is typically of stroke. So the patient suffered a stroke because she is within three hour window period of thrombolysis. You still can parade her into the intervention suit and do a intracerebral thrombolysis by instilling the tissue plasminogen activator. It's what you need to remember. 71 year old right handed male suffered collapse and uh, he has a past history of well-controlled hypertension, ischemic heart disease and atrial fibrillation. CT brain is being shown and you are able to see the presence. Right? And what is the contraindication for thrombolysis in this male? Time of onset. Because golden hour is over. 69 year old, six month history of progressive lower back pain, radiates down his buttock. Pain is exacerbated by taking his morning walk and it eased when he is going uphill but worsened when it is downhill. When you are going downhill, it is worsened, but you are going uphill, it is less. He stopped his daily walks because of that and now walks only slowly to the shops when he needs to. So what is this basically called as? So this is called as spinal claudication. Neural claudication. What is the meaning of claudication, uh, Varsha? Pain when you walk. Pain when you walk. What is vascular claudication? Vascular claudication is whenever you are having conditions like thrombangitis, obliterance, burger, burger disease, you get 
If you walk little, then uh, you will suffer from decreased blood flow in that narrowed vessels. Then walking will cause pain. Stopping to walk will decrease pain. That is vascular claudication. Here, walking downhill is causing uh, pain. Uphill causes. Uh, so when he is walking downhill, no, what will happen is he need to flex his spine, and this. Uh, Spinal stenosis become more compressed because of that. Suppose if he sits, then the pain is relieved. Okay, so typically the lower back pain that worsens if the spine is extending, extended when you are walking downhill and improves when flexed by going to uphill or if you are sitting is basically the way you recognize a neural claudication and differentiate that from simple vascular claudication. That is very important to remember, doctor. 31 year old woman, few days ago she was tripping over things, cranial nerves are intact, power is 3 by 5 in ankles. Her BP is 124 by 85 and uh, recently she recovered from an episode of food poisoning. Tell me. Gulen Mary. Post-infectious demyelinating polyneuritis is called Gulen Mary. That food poisoning is the clue. 17 year old man. Resting tremor, resting tremor means what, doctor? Parkinsonism, simple. So, which is not a Parkinsonism sign? Broad based guide is a sign of. Huh? Super! Cerebral attack. You said cerebral attacks, yeah? Really? Oh my God. My kid is talking. My kid is walking. Huh? Oh my God. First time I've seen her walking. Very good, Girija. I'm proud of you. Huh? Broad based guide is cerebral heart function. Why do you get uh, what is that condition? Yeah, Alexander Dalmore whiskey open yesterday. Parkinsonism. With autonomic dysfunction, what is this called as Girija? <laughs> huh? It's called <laughs> Parknomism, huh? autonomic, Parkonomic, uh, uh, what is Parkinsonism plus autonomic? Okay, it has two words. Let's play dumb charades. Two words. Sharmili. What do you call in uh, English? Oh. It is shy dragger, not dry shagger. Shy dragger, be very sure. <laughs> shy. No, no. Anita was my student. Always she used to have a problem. Sir, is it dry shagger? Sir, no, no, shy dragger. It is a shy dragger syndrome, which is Parkinsonism plus autonomic instability. Very good. Then 33 year old, headache. Her last migraine with aura was two months ago. She was taking paracetamol, QID, ibuprofen, TID, and uh, CT head. Uh, sorry, what is the best medical management? Huh? And her uh, PT brain was normal. You want to give Suma Triptan? There is an entity called analgesic 
headache. If you you give too much the analgesics, that lead to rebound analgesia headache. So stop paracetamol is the most important thing that you need to do. 17 year old girl is brought to emergency and uh, GTCS are there and uh, you have given rectal dizepam and uh, CT head is showing the image below. So what is the most appropriate management? So there is a space occupying lesion leading to status epilepticus. Girija, to define status epilepticus, ep the fits continues more than yeah, practically, but but 30 minutes is permitted. Very good. Can I join loading? Then 72 year old man who is a known case of epilepsy and hypertension is being admitted. Now, aspirin, phenytoin, amlodipine, drug history. Heart rate is 67 and 96% uh, on 2 liters. And uh, chest x ray is being shown to you. What is this? Showing uh, right lower lobe pneumonia. Huh? And it is typically an aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia, right? And uh, what is the correct, uh, what is the most important uh, test you want to do? His doctor requests blood tests, including phenytoin, because he's a known case of epilepsy. So a lot of times non-compliance to the Anti-epileptics is responsible for the recurrence of the seizures in a patient who is having epilepsy. Always epilepsy, clinical management is, uh, the, is a big subject. Hmm? You, uh, what type of epilepsy it is and then accordingly make the treatment happen. Hmm? So confirm that the patient is having compliance first. Then only you think about anti-epileptic resistance and all that and plan to add some more new things. Four year old with bronchial asthma, three and more episodes during daytime in a week with two wheezing episodes during night in a month. How will you grade? If you know this table, you will grade. Otherwise, you won't grade. So what is the table that you need to have in your database of mind? Doctor? Severe persistent, moderate persistent, mild persistent, mild intermittent. Depending upon the number of daytime symptoms, nighttime symptoms, PEF or PEFEV1, PEF variability and all these things. Purely butimarneval item hai, asthma classification and severity. Right? So, it's already given in your printout of explanatory booklet. Explanatory booklet is given? Ah, good. Now comes, where do you see Hutchison's triad doctor Bucci infection? Come on, by now you should tell all this. Huh? Huh? Chedu vina vaddu, chedu chuda vaddu, chedu matlada vaddu. Three monkeys of Gandhiji. Which infection? Come on, doctor, online students can answer. Online students can answer. Suresh? Mm. Yeah, syphilis. Come on. Satyendra Durru correctly answered. Boom Reddy did not answer. So Hutchison's triad is don't see bad, that is interstitial keratitis. Don't listen bad, deafness, and notched seizures. Low birth weight means less than 2.5 kg. Very low birth weight is less than 1.5. Extremely low birth weight is 1. Posterum means after 42. Ter Preterm means less than 37 weeks. Small for gestational age means 
he can be preterm term or posterm but compared to that given gestational age when he is born if he is below 10th percentile of any other normal child born uh, expected to have birth weight 10 percentile less than that it did not get no got it pakka so nocturnal enuresis bedwetting is abnormal beyond 5 years for three consecutive months 100 ml breast milk me how much protein 1.1 cow's milk is for cow's baby buffalo milk for buffalo baby goat for goat baby human milk for human baby but entrance me he will ask dr dutwala how much will be the one milk oriented question earlier uh, neat pg it used to be nowadays i am not finding this question but still when will the milk comes out of the neat pg examiner we don't know <laughs> be very sure to know this values these are all radiological signs of scurvy white line in metaphysis ground glass appearance zone of refraction cupping and fraying what is this called cupping and fraying of the metaphysis is the feature of rickets and uh, what do you get in uh, vitamin c scurvy subperiosteal hemorrhage scorbutic zone which is called tremor fields zone dense zone of provisional calcification which is called the white line of frankel white line of frankel and presence of ring shaped metaphysis which is called a ring shaped epiphysis called winterberg sign and uh, this kind of uh, excessive spur called as pelkans spur pelkans spur winterberg ring white line of frankel tremor field zone is curvy nalugu english alla perlu gurtu vetukunte ani seat raadu right ha most common cause of congenital hypothyroidism is thyroid it is genesis severe dehydration means how much more than 6% loss of uh, body weight right mild dehydration means less than 5% infant and less than 3% in older child and adult moderate dehydration means 5 to 10% infant and 6% in older child or adult severe dehydration means more than 10% in infant and more than 6% in older child or adult in this country called india if you don't know how to grade the severity of dehydration forget about neat pg our mbbs degrees are laughable stock seven day old infant neonate skull examination shows loud bruit tachycardia s3 gallop s3 is a sign of when do you get s3 when do you get s4 come on giri ja at that time no ma but when do you get s3 when do you get s3 s3 rahul girija those were the early days of our girija those were the early days of our romance a girl called girija used to walk into the class you forgot all those about the heart matters that we have discussed in those days <laughs> huh? left ventricular failure if it is there you listen s3 i told you no doctor if left ventricular failure is there left ventricle at the end of the systole unable to vomit all that blood and the blood remained at the end of the systole in the left ventricle only then when the ventricle is undergoing diastole after systole the blood in the atrium is jumping into ventricle and into a pool of blood and that lead to a splashing sound which is the early diastolic sound which is called s3 
S3. When do you call diastole between S1 and S2 or S2 and S S1? Lub and dub between S1 and S2 is what? Systole. S2 and S1, what is that called? Diastole. Where do you get S3? First one third. Where do you get S4? Last one third. And why do you get last one third of diastole? Whenever, ah, okay, aortic shows if it is there, what will happen? Left ventricle is hypertrophied. Last one third of diastole of the ventricle. Diastole and filling of the heart, systole and pumping of the blood from the heart into the aorta. Clear, Varsha? Hmm. Now, when the ventricle is undergoing diastole, last one third of diastole, atrium will contract and push the blood into ventricle. But if the ventricle is hypertrophied, not ready to expand, what atrium will do? Uses a lot of pressure to push the blood into and that lead to the sound called S4, which is in the last one third of the diastole. Cardiology, 400 bits of video is there in the online MBBS.com. Kindly do revision. Look at the notes. In the notes also we point, mentioned points. Huh? So, Dr. Murli Bharadva students means 30 out of 30 in general medicine. Nothing less because I'm a general medicine guy. Coincidentally teaching fibromas, endometriosis. Varsha, just for you. I learned about uh, what is meant by Epidermolysis bullosa or femphigus vulgaris, which involves mouth, which is subepidermal, which is hemidesmosomal, which is desmosomal, which is desmoclean antibody. All for you only, Varsha. And if you don't read, review the cardiology videos, because we met very late, Varsha. <laughs> so, please review. Because... Let me tell you, mock test, 54,000 points may, 10,000 you did revision means your level of answering will be different. 20,000 means you have different content. Just like some topics that we discuss, you are able to jump and answer, right? Yes, sir, no. Hey, Hypersegmented neutrophils, you answered correctly only. No. Huh? Huh. Even day, same things will be there always. So, doctor, seven days old, recurrent seizures, S3 means heart failure is there. Skull may there is a loud brewing. Then what is the lesion in the skull causing a high output failure leading to congestive heart failure? It is the vein of Gallen malformation which is leading to, you said correctly, answered correctly, good, Sai. I'm telling you, Sai, I'm telling you, nicely shaved, you have got a beard, handsome beard, eh? nicely shaved, get a nice photo. Now only I'm going to stick. Sai, Sai from Mercedes C-Class to Lamborghini A-Class. He's going to be topper. In uh, NEET PG, I'm going to tell everybody, right? So your confidence will only improve if you master those 54,000, okay? So what you do now, you take that notes I gave you. 20 pages can I revise in one day. Next day, 50 pages can I revise. Third week, in one day, can I revise 100 pages? Can I come to that stage? And you ask your maid if she knows English enough. <laughs> maid! Ramlamma or Ramlamma. Huh? So you ask your maid, you know English, right? I'll give you some extra money. 
Amagaru, what shall I do? She will ask. Take this Murli Bharadwaj notes. Now ask me questions. Okay. X descent is seen in. Uh, X descent is steep in. Dash. That bold is letter, no? Dash. She will ask you. Then immediately you should recall whether it is cardiac tamponade or constitutive pericarditis and tell her. You don't need a special coaching guru. Right? You just require become BSc, somebody who can be able to convert that into a question and give you an act to recall. That is important. Doctor. Okay? Now, fatty liver in Quashiorca because of a decreased production of lipoprotein. Lipoprotein has a protein and protein is not there in Quashiorca. So, lipoprotein is cancelled in Quashiorca. If there is no lipoprotein, the fat cannot be disposed and that leads to fatty liver. Then, Donovani body in granuloma inguinal, Adiri Karatiya Palanu, Girija, Keratoderma Blemorajika in Soriasis, sir. Soriasis, stand on the bench side. <laughs> I told you now, Sairiti, one of the school teacher who loves his wife. Recurrent orogenital ulcerations. They are not sexual transmitted disease. He said STD was done for me. HIV was done. Huh? What is that condition? Recurrent orogenital ulcerations with blenorrhagica. Keratoderma. It can happen in returns. Reactive arthritis. Also, it can occur in uh, actually uh, not in besets. Besets only orogenital lesions. No, keratoderma, blenorrhage. He can't see, he can't pee, he can't uh, climb. Climb. That is reactive arthritis, which is Ritter syndrome. So, keratoderma. I have even shown the lesions to you. Keratoderma on the feet, sole. Hmm? Okay. We can't see this. You will correctly answer. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Right. What are eight piece? The everyday piece are increasing. Papilo, squamous, pluritic, plain topped, polygonal, purple colored papules and plots with pigmentation after healing with pterygium formation in the nails is equal to like and planus. Just like uh, old time, what they used to say, no? Nizamiya, Ulvulum. Akbariya, Mehaboob, Pasha, Araha, Padarahe, Hey, like that, like in plainness. Papillosquamous, pluritic, plain, taut, polygonal, purple colored papules, plots, pigmentation after healing with the regium on the nails. Now, where do you find seminal vesicle indurated? If the TB is in the options, answer is only the TB. Nothing else can be there because we are in India. Melanocytes in melanoma come from? Answer correctly, no? That's good. That's good. Effect of attending Murli Bharadwaj. Least amount of carbon monoxide is there in sevoflurane. Which inhalational agent is best for pediatric population? Do you know? Yes, for Sishu. Yes, for Sishu. What is Sishu, Girija? Chota bacha. Sishu paludu. Yes, for Sivoflurane. Sivoflurane is the best anesthetic for Sishu. Is fortunate to remember. Halothin and Sivoflurane produce carbon monoxide. Most cardiotoxic local anesthetic is Bupivacaine. B for boom ready, B for Bupivacaine kills the heart. Huh? <laughs> now, anesthesia not impairing CNS activity is ISO. Huh? Isoflurane is good for CNS. Then, uh, how will you remember ISO is good for CNS? Generally, we say no, intracranial tension, ICT. There also it is I, and this is also. I, some Banda Gurtu. 
what is mendelson syndrome suppose if there is a pregnant woman suddenly you boom ready will come in mercedes benz c class hmm. she will throw the car there she will have a driver but the driver's job is only for parking because he does he can't drive like what boom ready girija ready will be driving she will be driving in rash driver eh? and so i mean good if she is a very fast driver eh? zig zag zig zag i like some anyway ene pal so adi so people with great driving sense cannot tolerate anything less than great <laughs> so girija uh um, when you become neat pt topper our uh, dream is what we will be loping in the chartered flight to aims counseling no that time we will sirenity will be chasing us then we will both be uh running away no so you drive zim 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 we will uh, escape and then uh, chartered flight will be waiting and i will come out like 007 and then we will go and uh, get in flight and fly away of course sirenity may be coming like uh, spider man spider man <laughs> good so what is mendelson syndrome so tomorrow girija will come in uh, uh, melk throw the mark driver somaya or lr venkatesh will park it so she will quickly go oh we thought next week but already she is having uh, labor pains prepare the theater she will be going for cesarean but before that only that pregnant woman eaten uh, chicken biryani so what will happen when uh, she is put on uh, anesthesia for uh, girija while scrubbing and she do the cesarean uh, there is a aspiration of her gastric contents into her lungs so to prevent that what she will tell the anesthetic selix uh, menua what is that called selix menua is uh, compression of the cricoid to avoid aspiration of the gastric contents into the lungs in a pregnant woman if at all there is any gastric content aspiration into lung that lead to development of chemical pneumonitis which is called mendelson syndrome is fortunate to remember okay in spinal anesthesia where do you put the drug doctor between paya and arachnoid not into the spinal cord hmm? between paya and arachnoid brax peak means what so it is a concept utilized to give a focused radiotherapy using ionizing radiation to the tumor without affecting the surrounding normal healthy tissues so brax peak is the peak of the brac curve which plots the energy loss as the ionizing radiation is traveling through the matter is what you need to remember is intracranial tension what will happen in infant the sutures will get widely separated that's called sutural diastasis drooping water lily sign can you see the drooping water lily varsha this is drooping down this is normal right eh? which is typically seen in whenever there is any superior hole of the kidney any renal mass is there then the pelvic elysial system will droop down when you do the what is this called pilography passing contrast into the kidney and pelvic elysial system cold lesion on the bone scan means uh metastasis even multiple myeloma also doesn't pick up the radio nuclear scan because to pick up radio nuclear scan what do you require blast or class blast lesions will lead to increased radio iodine uptake lytic class lesions due to the osteoclastic dissolution will not cause increased radioactive uh ion uptake they are called cold lesions if cold lesions are there they are generally most of the lesions are uh, 
uh, I mean, uh, typically in the metastasis. Okay. Now, technetium labeled RBCs are used in the diagnosis of GI bleeding. So, what is the common source of the bleeding from the GIT which can occur? There are lesions called angiodysplastic lesions which can lead to the bleeding and anemia. Suppose if it is a colon carcinoma leading to bleeding, if you pass colonoscopy, you can see that. But if it's angiodysplastic lesion, you cannot see a gross mass. In that case, what will you do? You will do 99M technetium labeled RBC scintigraphy, which will be able to make you identify a bleeding happening from the angiodysplastic lesion coming from the capillaries. Okay? So that much you learn now. But my radiology we will discuss. Post-traumatic stress disorder means what? You'll be recollecting the events. Last time need PG, I was entering the exam hall after the exam was over. 50% questions, I don't know even terminology also. Huh? That's called post-traumatic, repeatedly. Brooding followed by homicidal tendency. Not suicidal. That is depression. Brooding, I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill, need PG. Then you went and killed a need PG. That is called a mock. So these are all basically what culture syndromes. So what is a mock doctor? Brief period of episodic violence marked by brooding, often ending in homicide. So a guy will take a knife and then keep running and keep killing the, slaughtering the people. Typically it happens in Philippines, Papua, New Guinea Islands near Australia. Then what is Buffy Delirante? Forensic is very interesting subject. Eh? Brief period of psychotic symptoms with marked agitations, auditory visual hallucinations in West Africa. We get Purakam, no? Oh, this time TRS is going to become the winner. BJP is going to be the winner. So they will be fully psyched up. Buffet Deliranti. Thought syndrome means what? So typically seen in Indian subcontinent among young males with a poor sexual knowledge. So they will go and ask, is masturbation good or bad? <laughs> right. So in fact, one of my classmates, eh, he used to have a big obsession. Masturbation is uh, going to what is the bad effect. Once before pharmacology exam, he stopped all studies and said, let us have a discussion about is masturbation good or bad? So another fellow, Madhu was there. He said, OK, let's go and find out the doctor. To our karma, what happened is a homeopathy doctor is only available. There's a professor of medicine, everyone is there, no? But he's shyful to ask because everybody will know is not good. So went to homeopathy doctor. He said, for every drop of semen, one liter of your blood is polluted. It will become broken down. According to homeopathy textbook, he said, finish. So he went and spread the all boys, <laughs> you know, so that's called thought syndrome. Then what is Koro? There is a sudden onset of anxiety on a belief that one's nipples are vulva in case of females or penis in case of men is shrinking and receding into the body and it is going to cause death. See, compared to all this problems. Some of the students preparing for need PG, what will they say? They'll be next. They'll be next. How will be next? Only next. Not need PG. Then somebody was telling in the WhatsApp group, Are pala pala karo yaar. <laughs> next year need PG or AI PG. Questions to hoi hai. Answers to badlega nahi. Agar aap nahi pade to. <laughs> so, that is also a culture syndrome. Will there be next? Is there any special strategy for next, sir? 
compared to neat pg pehla neat pg strategy only you don't have <laughs> what with the special strategy for suddenly one uh, teacher will put a youtube video four days how to crack next last 30 days time table i should give you <laughs> huh it will have millions of uh, clicks time pass right so neat pg me you can do lot then what is latha latha means in southeast asia sudden onset of fright ecolalia ecopraxia command obedience mostly seen in women what is meant by ecolalia i like chiru you like chiru yeah i too like chiru right then i like ice cream vanilla what about you oh you like i too like vanilla very good we are both made for each other and let's go and marry later all psychosis will come out this is called <laughs> egolalia whatever you say they will say we used to have one patient in ward 11 by mistake if you say no it's common that you are a post graduate young with high hormones and you have got a very nice uh, nursing uh, student you say wow you look beautiful sister uh, lily then that fellow he is uh, sitting in the first uh, bed to means hey sister lily you are looking beautiful hey sister lily you are looking beautiful because dr murli said <laughs> so that is called ecolalia so that is a Uh, and also they will show command obedience that's the reason uh, sai if all girls say no to you go to southeast asia <laughs> catch a woman who is suffering from latha so that command obedience if you say hey you come to me fall in love with me and marry command obedience she'll come and marry you <laughs> but later you need to handle her uh, Uh, latha <laughs> then spell one is able to talk with ghosts who will tell when will be the need pg notification going to come spirits susto where one fears that his soul is going out of the body into the examiner's soul and he knows what is going to be the question paper <laughs> so that's called spell you are all in dr murli bardwa spell now doctor kleptomania means Huh? Uh, if uh, uh, you are a famous actor, all the makeup items you will pick up and uh, go. We used to have one casualty medical officer in Gandhi. Big kleptomania. Boys, girls used to lose their Littmann stethoscopes. <laughs> <laughs> so we used to don't know why people are losing. so once in the gandhi hostel we found that open the room litman stethoscopes are there then we thought it's not just costly items you know girls combs lipsticks uh, hair pins uh, uh, even uh, while sleeping uh, they leave the slippers he used to pick up the slippers uh, many items of minuscule nature so that is kleptomania we found and everybody came and uh, recovered their items it was a big stampede in the gandhi hostel way back 1994 huh? so kleptomania is stealing irresistible desire to steal common in females but other case i know one was a male uh, cmo but it is not costly objects they don't have any value any meaning at all but they will keep it right so there is another mania called uh, klepto neat pg app mania <laughs> go to maro go to prep ladder go to uh, prep ladder prep ladder <laughs> all uh, uh, this thing go to all face to face coaching classes but you don't read then comes cataplexy what is cataplexy sudden loss of muscle tone simply that is why why do they get that because they suddenly intrude into their rem sleep normally nrem followed by rem will occur non rapid eye movement rapid eye movement so whenever emotional burst like laughing or crying is there they will go into 
uh, REM sleep. And what is the main reason for that? There is a hypocretin deficiency, a neurotransmitter in hypothalamus that keeps you remain arousal, maintain your muscle tone, right? So, Teja, how is hypocretin levels today? No sleep. So, a lot of times uh, our teachers will uh, create a hypocretin level deficiency in our life uh, in medical college. So, we'll go into sudden loss of tone while listening to the class. So, that's the point, doctor. I leave the uh, narcolepsy. What is the tetrad of clinical features in narcolepsy? Cataplexy, which I told you, automatism, sleep paralysis, hypnagogic hallucinations. So the hallucinations which will come just before the onset of sleep. Hypnagogic hallucinations, sleep paralysis, automatism and cataplexy. This four is combined called the narcolepsy is what you need to remember. Now, what is the indication for giving an electroconvulsive shock in a patient of suicide, uh, of depression? If it is a major depression with a suicidal tendency, then that becomes an indication for ECT. Psychiatry is a very beautiful branch, doctor. Hmm? Now, till 150, we will discuss and call it off. Remaining uh, explanatory booklet is there, no? You can do the revision, right? At least, uh, oh my God. Two over 40 minutes, no? Too much? Uh, enough, huh? Got? 120. Okay? All right. Colovisical fistula. It is connecting the colon to the bladder. So it will carry the colonic gas into bladder and that lead to development of pneumatoria. Pneumatoria. Infant with hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, what will he do, Girija? He'll be hypertrophic, congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis if it is there, no? That lead to obstruction at the level of the stomach and all. He will be vomiting and losing HCL. He will become dehydrated. He will become dehydrated. He will have a decreased plasma volume that lead to decreased renal plasma flow, that will lead to, come on, decreased renal plasma flow, that will lead to increased renin angiotensin, uh, leading to hyperaldosteronism. What will aldosterone will do? It will come to the collecting duct and causes the retention of sodium and loss of K plus send H plus into urine. Loss of K plus lead to hypokalemia. Loss of H plus lead to alkalosis. So, hypokalemic. Hypochloremic because he is vomiting HCL into vomitus. Hypokalemic, hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis is what you see in hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. What is the least common volvulus? Large, always small bubble volvulus are most common. Desmoid tumor, uh, at least this you answer correctly. What is that syndrome called? Colonic polyp plus desmoid tumor is called. Colonic polyp uh, with the uh, CNS tumor is called what? Come on. Huh? Huh? Gardner? <laughs> Varsha, Varsha. You said Gardner, right? Huh? Varsha, Varsha. That's good. Gardner syndrome, no. What is that with CNS called? That also, if you tell, no. I'll take uh, another 60 ml toasting for uh, uh, Varsha. Tarcot syndrome, female endomatous polyposis, colonic polyp with CNS involvement is Tarcot and desmoid tumor, osteomas. I told you, no? You remember now? Notebook. Huh? 
So good. Gardner syndrome is autosomal dominant syndrome, GI adenomatous polyps, osteomas, skin and soft tissue tumor like just desmoid tumor. Whenever there is any biliary obstruction, you are suspecting biliary obstruction. Patient is having jaundice. Patient is having pruritus. What is the investigation you want to do? Ultrasound. What do you want to see in ultrasound? Common bile duct dilatation. CBD dilatation. Because the right and left hepatic duct give rise to common bile duct. And whenever the gallstone throws the stones into the bile duct, and lead to obstruction before the obstruction part of the bile duct will undergo pre obstruction there will be a dilatation that you will first identify on the ultrasound then you will do all other investigations whenever pneumoperitoneum is there what is the investigation ct abdomen So, doctor, very good. Satyendra said Tarkot. Satyendra said Gardner. Satyendra, Alluru. So, where are you from, Satyendra? Which city are you from? Nellur or Elur or huh? Karnula? Alluru is a surname in Karnula. Uh, okay, good, good. Online always you should punt answers. I love that. Now, doctor, pneumoperitoneum, if it is there, you will do CT. Already we discussed now. Do you remember regular sign, football sign? Kunchim, kunchim. Okay. And also, I mean, uh, see, whenever there is any pneumoperitoneum, you know, around the bubble, you will have air. Right? And uh, that uh, typically is called regular sign. Agree? You remember? Now, a chronic alcoholic regurgitation, retrosternal pain by a Barrett's esophagus. So, what is your recommendation? Every two years, get a endoscopic biopsy. Follicular carcinoma of the thyroid typically lead to bony metastasis. Who goes through lymph node? Papillary, go to lymph node. Agree? Then uh, FNAC is never diagnostic of follicular carcinoma. Why? Sorry. Mala story yapkundama, travati pri yapkundama. Huh? Ipri yapkundama, next to life unta dunda. Egon. See, follicular doctor, you have adenoma, you have follicular. Carcinoma. Both of them will show dysplastic follicular cells. If you do FNAC, at most what do you get? Dysplastic follicular cell. But you don't know whether it is a simple adenoma or whether it is a carcinoma. Only if you do biopsy of the thyroid, you can demonstrate the capsular invasion and confirm that it is follicular carcinoma. That's the reason FNAC is not a diagnostic of follicular carcinoma in thyroid is what you need to remember. Once more, there are 10 features of papillary thyroid cancer, follicular cancer, and we are going to read it in endocrinology basic review. Hernia prone to recur after primary repair is a Incisional hernia. Who create incisional hernia? Hysterectomy. Madam, hysterectomy did. Her husband will do 
insertional hernia repair. Eh, good money. So, next, intestinal anastomosis. Who provides strength for it? It is the submucosa. Eh? Submucosa. Because submucosa has a lot of collagen. So, what is MSMS? Mucosa, submucosa, muscularis mucosa, and serosa. And which is the only part of the gut which doesn't have serosa? Beautiful. Esophagus, what is the type of histology of the esophageal carcinoma in the upper two thirds? And what is the histology in the lower one third? Very good. Squamous cell. Edino. Adenocarcinoma. Because here Barrett's esophagus. Right? Adenocarcinoma. Benign small bubble tumor. It can cause hemorrhage. It can be asymptomatic. Accidentally found. Anything can happen, but it won't cause any malabsorption. Okay? So, what is the most common benign tumor of small bubble? Fada, pad, bolo. Adenoma. Which small bubble lesions produce symptoms? Gist tumors. What is gist? Gastrointestinal stromal tumor. What is the mutation that you find in gist tumors? Huh? No. Are Chatbot stopped. See kit. Chepper, eh? Seek it. Okay? Then what is the most common site for carcinoid in GIT? Appendix. Most common site of carcinoid in small intestine? Ilium. Most common site for small bubble adenocarcinoma, duodenum and proximal jejunum. Most common small bubble tumor in children less than 10 years, lymphoma. Small bubble tumor with the best prognosis, carcinoid. Adi story. So, Kada kanchiki manam intiki. So, thank you all the online students and face to face students for inspiring the teacher to bring the best out of him. Tomorrow we will see the end of hematology. Leukemias, lymphomas, antiplatelets, thrombolytics. Done. Right? So from day after tomorrow, freshly we will start. In, what do you want? Cardiology, neurology, endocrinology is the only three systems left. In, basic sciences or biochemistry. Huh? General uh, pharmacology, general pathology. Okay. Deal? Good. Uh, don't delete. Keep it. <laughs>